All right, gang, welcome back to another one. It's been a while. It's been a while since I made a video. Um, I have been fishing, but just a lot of stuff going on. I got married, as you see, bam. Uh, went on the honeymoon, and now we're back. Back to reality, so it's time to start making some more videos. I, I have been fishing, I just haven't been recording. It's just been too hectic. We've been too busy for me to sit down and edit videos. So uh, finally, kind of back to level playing field. We're not it's not when we get home from work every night we have to do something something for the wedding or start packing for the honeymoon we're just done with all of it so here we are back on the river and i'm going to start taking my videos in a little bit of a different direction i've been watching a lot of videos of people doing like riverside catch and cooks like they'll catch something and they'll eat it not immediately but right where they're at and i think that's a pretty cool concept so i bought some like the camping cooking wear so uh you know a little propane tank with the burner some uh cooking or uh the camping pots and pans set so we're gonna be dealing with that today um, I'm gonna be fishing for just about anything all right uh, smallies rock bass largemouth bluegill crappie anything that wants to play is gonna be fair game today uh, I did bring a catfish pole probably not gonna keep any catfish I was going to but then I realized when I got here I didn't bring any pliers to peel the skin back with when I clean them so we're gonna leave the catfish out but we're gonna go ahead and try to catch some fish today throw them on a stringer I'm gonna cook them up for you guys so let's do it all right so like I said, starting with the ultralight, uh, these baits are actually at Walmart. Um, they're Walmart's brand, Ozark Trail, and I just love them. Uh, you just kind of bounce them off the bottom, or you can fish them fast, it don't really matter, but these smallies really eat it up, so we'll get to it here. And see they got rip, rap, rapids coming down, and then there's this big pool of slack water, and then there's another big pool of slack water down there, but it's really fast here, and it slows down there. So we, I like to cast downstream, work it back, but you don't... I like to fish certain areas at a time so you're not spoiling your next cast. So I'm actually going to start real close here and uh, just toss this little crawdaddy right in there. And I'm not expecting that to take too long to get tagged up here. Nothing. Kind of surprising. That's alright though. Oh, there was one. I feel like a pretty good one, too. Everything feels big on this little pole, though, so I guess I should not speak before I see it. There's one. There we go. All right. Oh, and he spit. He was pretty little. Little smallmouth. That's okay. <clears throat> I'd like one a little bit bigger. Maybe in that like 10, 12 inch range would be lovely. All right, I'm going to wade down. You see the second set of rapids there and then another big slow spot. I'm gonna see if I can catch anything there. So I'm gonna take a walk and yeah, I'll see you over there. So the rapids are here and that slow spot's on that far bank. So I'm gonna walk in a little bit. It's only about ankle deep where I'm standing right here but it deepens out, I would imagine, underneath these rapids. And then there's another set of rapids here, if need be. I'm hoping to catch my fish right here, but we'll see. It's still pretty quick right through here. I might need to move down to this next set of rapids if we're going to get into any fish, I think. But there is still one real slow spot I haven't cast it into yet. Right there. Oh, I got one. I got one. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Oh, man, he spit it too. Not having the best of luck here. Right on the edge of that pocket back there. There's a fish. There's a fish. Right when it hit the water. That feels like a rocky. Yep, sure is. Well, hell, we'll keep him. There we go. Not very big, but I've heard that rock bass taste pretty good, so I guess we'll try that out today. He's pretty small though. Yeah, we'll try for a bigger one. Cool. First one on the day. Little rock bass. Cool. I can almost always tell when I'm reeling in a rock bass because they hit it really hard and you think you got a good fish, but then when you reel them in, they're pretty much just dead weight. They don't fight, at least in this river, they just don't fight. 
so I can almost always tell when I got one. But uh, yeah, I'll take them all day long. They are good to eat, I hear, but I want one that's a little bit bigger. There's no regulations on rock bass, so I would love to hook up with a few of them today. I started down here below these rapids, and then there's a bunch of little series of rapids. I'm just going to start making my way upstream and uh, see if we can make anything happen that way. I'm a bit surprised at the how small a lot of these fish are. I have pulled some nicer fish out of here, but so far they've only been like four or five inches long. Fish. There we go. That is a smallie worth keeping right there. We'll hold on to that guy. Very nice. All right, one on the board, finally. Took long enough. All right, come here, you. Come here, that's enough. That's enough, okay. You are going nuts. All right, come here. Stringer in. on the longest stringer in the world. <laughs> it's like 15 feet long. Just dig this on in. All right, he ain't going anywhere. Lovely. All right, we'll keep her up. See if we can get a few more. If I get one more, a little bit bigger than that, that'd be perfect. He's still just a tad small, but I won't keep anything smaller than him. Let's try right in here. Yeah, there's a little rock pile right there. That could be good. I don't know if you can see the little, little ripples, but there's a big hump right here, and that deep, gets deeper here. So we're going to see. There could be something hanging out down below these ripples. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little small, but... A fish nonetheless. He hit right as I was about to reel that back in. Another smallie. Need something a little bigger. Alright, downsized back to the ultralights. And I switched up to this little paddle tail. They're called sliders, crappie sliders. And uh, yeah, they're a lot of fun to fish with. Real subtle, but man, the fish will love them. So we'll hopefully hook up with some more fish here. Oh boy. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That. Oh, wow. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. He clobbered it. Give him some drag to play with. He's pretty big for this pole. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. Oh, oh, he spit it. <laughs> oh, man. That was so cool. That was like a two pound smallie, man. Whew. He gave this little pole a workout. Wow, that was cool. Wow. That's what I'm used to hooking up with in here. That's why I've been so surprised we haven't hooked up with anything bigger. Man, that was really cool. Sweet. So much fun on this ultralight. I was really playing him light too because I wasn't planning on keeping him or nothing, but if I wanted to, I could have horsed him in a little bit and probably landed him, but man, he was big. That was sweet. I was walking down here, but fish are jumping and chasing minnows around over here. Just like that. There's one. There's one. Oh, it's a bluegill. Yep, that's going on the stringer. <laughs> no kidding. Who would have thought I'd be catching a bluegill out here this morning? I'll take it, though. I will take that for sure. Very cool. Well, he's not huge. I might try to go for one more since he's a little guy. One more should do me in. And of course, now that I only need one little one, I'll probably end up catching nothing but big ones. <laughs> it just seems to be the theme of the day. But that is all right. We'll get this guy on the stringer 
and see if we can get one more fish and then we'll get to cooking. A little camping, cooking, whatever is all set up. I moved down actually upstream quite a bit. I found a good spot where nice and shaded. There's no wind so the flame's not going to burn out on my uh, burner here. So I'm going to still go for one more. I'm going to give it just maybe five or ten minutes casting around this area. Good looking area. More slack water, light current. Um, and then once I'm done cleaning these fish I have on the stringer here, I'm going to use the leftovers of them to catfish with and I'm going to cast on that far shaded bank. See if I can maybe catch a couple catfish while I'm cooking or after I'm done eating. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, Ultralight is out of commission, had a big old tangle up in the line, so we we're just rocking the one pole today, or the rest of the day I should say, so let's get to it. So to clean these guys, I'm just going to head, gut, and scale them, and that's it. Um, it's as easy as it sounds if you've never done it, you're literally just going to have a nice sharp knife, cut the head off, cut uh, down their belly and get all their guts out, you can rinse them out just in the water. That'd be fine you're gonna cook all the bacteria and stuff off of them um, so yeah that's all it takes and then um, something to scale them with I use a butter knife that seems to be the best bet but it's easier to do them after you have headed and gutted them so we'll go ahead and get to it we got one bluegill and one smallmouth bass going in the pan today so but like I said once I'm done cleaning them I'm gonna save like I'll get as a head a piece of them so I'm gonna save that piece of bait and I have my bait caster there so once I'm done cooking I'm gonna get a bait out in the water and uh, see if we can catch a catfish while we're eating or after we're eating, whatever. So let's get to cleaning these guys. All right, and just as I said, easy peasy. Knife out of its case. Make sure he doesn't flop on you. He's probably gonna wanna go nuts for a second. And this is all it takes. Head. heads off and like I said I'm gonna save the heads for uh, catfishing and then right down the middle of his gut we'll run this knife through right about down to that last anal fin there there's plenty enough and then from there you can just reach on in pull the guts out don't need any of them and we'll find a spot where we can kind of rinse. This is good right here. Kind of a sandy area. And get all that guts out. Just like that. And that's what it should look like on the inside. Just clear. Um, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of red. That's just blood. That'll be fine. That's not an issue. But if you can, scrape some of that stuff out on the back. As you can see, I cleaned most of that out. Just like that. All right, that one's good. Let's grab the smallie, do the same thing to him, and then we'll get to scaling. I'll show you how I do that. And just as we did with the old bluegill, head first. This is a little bit tougher. Jeez, <laughs> a little tougher to get through. He's done, upside down, right down to his anal fin, usually plenty far, and you can start digging on in, and that'll just become turtle food or catfish food or raccoons, whatever feels like playing with it. We'll go down here where we just were and rinse them out real good. look in there oh yeah that's even more clean than the bluegill lovely so I will grab my butter knife and we will get to scaling pretty easy peasy um, it's one of the things once you get started like once you get the knife under the scales and get going it goes so easy so hold him with his head facing away and yours and take that knife and just like that as you can see it starts turning white that's the scales coming off okay a spoon also works good I've seen people use a spoon I just like a butter knife it uh, I don't know it's got those ridges on it 
seems to be pretty easy, straightforward to use. You can turn them this way to get the tail. And that's about it. And you'll give them another rinse just to get any loose scales that decide to stick to them. But yeah, that's one side done for the most part there. And you'll just cook it with the skin on. Oops, dropped in there. I'm gonna start up here. Yep, pretty easy. Bluegills are even easier. They don't have as thick of scales. Um, so same gist, I probably won't include that just because you've already seen me scale the bass here. So we'll scale the bluegill and then start getting everything ready to put these guys in the pan. Alright, so we're getting to prepare to cook these guys. Super easy. Uh, just clean off your fillet knife, or if you have another one, go for that. And I'm just going to score this meat. So, just a couple little slices into the meat. Just like that. Three should do. I'll give it three on this side. And do the same on... Oop, didn't get in there all the way. Same on the bluegill. Cut him. Probably only two on him, he's not as big. Just like that. And that's just to let that meat cook a little bit better and get the seasoning in. So first just salt. Make sure you get the inside as well. Outside layer, good. Inside, outside, lovely. And then I also bought some uh, Blackstone Cajun seasoning. Uh, I'm imagining it's pretty good on fish. That's what they chose to have the picture with on the front. It looks like salmon, so sounds good to me. So we'll get some rub on there. Other side too. Inside. Just like that. So now what you're going to need to do is get this Thing rolling you need a lighter I thought this had a uh, igniter built into it but it does not so you do need to light it you hear it going and we'll get that puppy lit up there it goes and it's that easy I'm gonna lay this guy on top once that gets good and hot I am just gonna throw on some oil I got in a bag so it doesn't leak uh, olive oil and then we'll toss those two guys in the pan so we'll wait for this to heat up and then it'll be go time all right so I just put the oil in and it is hot 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 it <laughs> almost burnt the pan a little bit right when I put it in so we're gonna let it cool down it was way too hot to put these fish on um, I turned it down quite a bit this thing burns hot I'm very surprised at it it's just, I have it on very, very low, and it's still just torched. <laughs> See if I can cool this pan down some before I burn my fish. It's not, what I'm hoping for is to burn my fish right away. All right. I think we're good with that. So let's get these puppies in. Here we go. One in. Oh, yeah. And now the second just like that and there we go we'll give them probably a few minutes on each side and uh, yeah I need to get something out to flip these with I think there's spoons in this little pack here that would be perfect so one for eating one for flipping it's looking good we'll move these around a little bit yep don't want them to be sticking down there awesome been on for couple minutes now we're gonna go ahead and give them a flip and see what they look like oh yeah Oops. come on now oh yeah those are good and done get the same thing going on this side all right yeah we'll give that a few more minutes I did turn it up a notch it was cooking kind of slow 
um, but it's looking, I mean, just about done. This, this bluegill might have a thick spot right here on the end that doesn't look like it's quite done yet, but we'll be sure to get it down here and we'll get back to you. I'm going to go ahead and call these. I think they are good and done. Um, got a fresh plate and a fresh uh, spork. So we're going to hop them off. There's one. And there is two. Okay. Now, note to any of you thinking about getting some equipment like this. I would say skip on the Walmart Ozark Trail brand uh, camping set, which is all of this. The sporks and plates and all that, that's fine, but uh, this is one use and it just couldn't handle the burner. And the oil burnt onto it and it's all deformed along the bottom now. It's all bumpy and uh, stuff, so I doubt I'll get another use out of this. I, I don't even want to use it again because uh, it started smoking like crazy there for a while and I had to turn it down, but uh, nonetheless, it got the job done today. So I will have to get a new pan that will be sufficient for all this. I'm not even going to bother using any of this stuff, which is a little bit of a relief because that's kind of a lot to lug around. So one pan should do me in good. But nonetheless, here's our fish. Um, they are looking great. When you cook them like this, you kind of want them to be just about falling apart. That's how you know that they're pretty much done. Um, but one bass from bluegill. We're going to go ahead and dig on in. All right, guys. So we are done cooking. There is our plate very nice all right so we have one bass one bluegill to eat here um i'm gonna eat real quick and then like i said i got a bass head and a bluegill head that i'm gonna cast out for catfish i'll probably give it like 10 15 minutes um being kind of in the middle of the day now those cats won't be biting much but nonetheless we are here to eat and try this bass with the cajun seasoning there's a first bite all right white meat super white That's good. That Cajun seasoning is really good. This is actually the first time I've ever had smallmouth bass. I've had largemouth a bunch, I've had bluegill a bunch, but never smallie. It's not bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, the skin got pretty crispy with that oil. So I like that. There's another one, got a little bit of skin on there as well. So that'll be kind of crispy, crunchy. Great, really good. Only downside is that pan. So otherwise this has been a great trip. Um, did lose some fish, had some bad luck with my uh, ultralight, but um, overall what I wanted to do here is catch fish, use that equipment for the first time. I just bought it all yesterday. So uh, note taken, spend the money on a little bit better pan. Uh, just one that's not gonna burn can handle some heat because that burner does burn hot. All right, I mean, you barely turn it on past low and it's just blazing hot. So uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I'm going to finish eating this and then we're going to go ahead and uh, try to catfish. We'll do it for a little bit and if nothing bites, then I'll probably just wrap the video up here. So let's go catfish. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and cast out this guy here, uh, just ahead of that bluegill and I'm going to get him on that far bank. Lovely. And now we wait. For sure. Hey, I'm fighting a fish. I'll call you back, buddy. Alright. All right. Bye. <laughs> Alright, I was on the phone, but I hooked up while on the phone. And it looks like a pretty decent little channel cat there. This is recording, right? Low battery. Low battery. This is probably going to be the last fish of the day. We'll get this puppy in. Oh yeah, not a bad little channel cat. Sorry about the commentary there. I didn't get the takedown or anything. I was on the phone when he hit, but uh, there he is. Look at that guy. He is talking and he is mad. All right. Sweet. Go throw up the other camera. End this video on a good note here. How about that? Very cool. Okay. A little hectic there. I was on the phone with a buddy, but... Uh, we're gone, or that's it. One final guy to end the day on. Pretty cool, he about ripped that pole out of the, I don't have a rod holder, I just had it leaned up against my tackle box, but I picked it up and I was holding on to him while I was waiting to get off the phone and I started recording and then uh, you guys saw me probably take him down. But yeah, little channel cat. Sweet, that'll do it. All right, that is gonna wrap up today's video. Hope you guys liked it. Um, let me know what you thought, that was kind of a new, 
new style of video I'm trying. I, I had a lot of fun doing it today. Um, it's like less pressure for some reason to fish. I don't know why, I just had fun. Like I lost two really, really nice smallmouth, which normally I would have been like, not mad, but like, damn, I missed a smallie. But I didn't even care that much. It was just fun to be out here. And it's probably because I haven't fished in a little while. So I was just happy to be out, but uh, really fun day. Got to cook some fish, uh, got to catch a nice cat to end the day on. And uh, yeah, can't complain about that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you liked this uh i'd like to start doing some more of this and in integrate this into hunting all right so keep an eye out for that in the future when i'm uh, hunting season's just like a month out and we're we're done fishing we're hunting for the year so that being said if you guys like today's video hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you have not and we'll see you on the next one